Comic Book Savant, episode 349. I know this. This I know. All that I have, all that is me, resides inside my poetry. And every time I write a rhyme, it might be the line that sets mine free. And also, I know that... Welcome to the Comic Book Savant Podcast. I'm your host, James Harris. This week, this episode is just a summer movie roundup or mid-year roundup of all the comic book movie releases we've had up to date and kind of reflecting, giving you my thoughts on the movies we've had released so far. And we'll talk about uh, some of the movies that are upcoming. We still have three more major comic book releases before year's end. And we're going to get in and talk about all those things. But before we get into that, as always, I'd like to give a shout out to my friends over at the Comics Podcast Network. You can find them over at comicspodcast.com. If you like this show or all the different shows that I've recommended, uh, most of them are listed over on the Comics Podcast Network with tons more. So if you like this content and you want to find more comic book uh, related podcasts and video shows, check out ComicsPodcast.com. There are literally hundreds of different shows listed there and it's growing daily. So it's a good one-stop shop for comic book podcast content. So if you have a moment, stop by there and check that out. As well, I also love to give a shout out to the sponsor for this in every episode, which is my friends over at InStockTrades.com, um, the best place on the internet to go to find collected editions, Marvel Masterworks, uh, trades, uh, omnibuses, um, absolute editions, you name it, they have it, and they have it at reasonable prices. They have discounts from 35 42 and up to 50% off. They have a, on their homepage at InStockTrades.com, they have deals of the week, which are, of course, updated weekly. You get up to 50% off, and they have numerous titles. They have anywhere from 5 to around 10 titles discounted at 50% off. If you're a U.S. customer and you fi- um, you hit the $50 threshold on your order, you get free shipping within the U.S. If you happen to be an international listener, you still get all the great savings, but you don't get that extra bonus of the free shipping. But they do have some of the most competitive and cheapest international shipping rates around, so you can still check out the site and probably still save quite a bit of money. And I also like to thank them for the current contest that's running. If you guys are unaware, um, we just had the 11th anniversary episode drop. Um, the um, in stock trades was nice enough to supply three gift certificates for one for 75, one for 50, and one for $25 that I'm giving away. The contest will run to the end of the month. So, you guys, all you have to do is go to comicbooksavant.com website, go to the contact us page, and, and you can drop an email, one per listener. In the actual contact line of the um, form that you fill out to send an email, just send uh, 11th anniversary contest or 11 year contest in the subject line. And that'll be your entry, one per listener. I will be doing a drawing at the um, at the end of the month for the winners for that. And I will announce that in one of the uh, beginning episodes uh, of um, next month. And you'll you'll get a digital gift certificate again for either 75 50 or $25 with InStockTrades.com. So that'll be on us. And I appreciate everything they've done. They've been a great partner over the years and we're going to do more giveaways and things of that, um, of that ilk more going forward as, um, throughout the year. Um, but I thank them for their support. And now let's get into the meat of the episode. We've had our fair share of, of movies come out this year. Uh, we've, we've had, um, Logan, we've had guardians of the galaxy, volume two, wonder woman, Spider-Man homecoming, uh, all have dropped so far, as far as the big major releases. So we're just going to go out. This, this is kind of my, like I said, mid year in review when it comes to comic movies, uh, Logan dropped back in, I want to say it was February. It was so, you know, and that's the great thing now about comic movies is that before 
we only kind of got them during the summer months. Now it's so many that we're getting them all year round, which is, I think it's awesome for us as fans. Cause I, I felt like I know for me in covering, um, comic movies and doing reviews it was kind of tough and like the summer season seemed to be the hardest because getting out to see everything reviewing it and it, it was seemed like every week or every few weeks it was another movie another movie so having them spread out for me as a reviewer if i want to do back research or you know read comics that might reread comics if i've already read them that are related to the movie it kind of gives me a little bit of space compared to it's another movie it's another movie um which i which i think is great and then you get a chance to breathe in between and appreciate each movie for what it is when they're back to back you know it's kind of hard to appreciate the one because you got the next one coming up so i i kind of uh, as a just a fan and a content creator I like it spread out throughout the year. And I, and I hate, you know, I used to hate when it's like, Oh, summer's over this, you know, we're not going to get any more movies to now. We still have three real huge releases coming up with Thor Ragnarok, justice league and star Wars, the last Jedi to end the year really strong after already having, um, what I could, what I would say is a, a pretty strong year, um, in the form of comic movies. So the first movie I want to revisit is Logan, which is directed by James uh, Mangold and was written by David James Kelly and James Mangold. And the breakdown is as follows. In the near future, a weary Logan cares for ailing Professor Xavier somewhere on the Mexican border. However, Logan's attempts to hide from the world and his legacy are upended when a young mutant arrives uh, pursued by dark forces. Now I gave this movie a date night rental, um, rating, which on a 10 point scale is around an 8.5. Um, and it, that holds up. I have, um, rewatched the movie since this came out on home video. It's been out on home video for a while. Um, I've had a chance to rewatch it. Um, for some people it's higher, I, you know, for me, my sticking point, the thing that kind of turned me off with the movie was the Logan versus Logan, the Logan clone fight at the end. I understood what it was trying to do and what it was a metaphor for and all that great stuff. It just kind of take, took me out the movie um, a little bit. And, and again, and I said in my initial review, which um, I'll have the links to the individual episodes that I did the full reviews. Um, so I'm not going to retread too much that, um, you know, it just took a little off. It knocked it down a little bit for me. Um, and just, that's the way I feel. And even in rewatching it as strong of a movie, I think it is, it, I think it probably would have been a nine, nine, nine point five for me, but that just, it, it changed my enjoyment of the movie when the moment I saw him fighting himself. It just did. And I couldn't shake it even in rewatching it. It just bothered me and it it hampered my enjoyment. So for that I had to knock, you know, the, a point off for that because it just it deflated the movie somewhat for me, which I thought was a really great movie up until that point. Um, next is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, this was directed by James Gunn and written by James Gunn. And the breakdown is as follows. Uh, set of the backdrop of the awesome mixtape number two, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 continues the team's adventures as they uh, unravel the mystery of Peter Quill's true parentage. Um, for this one, I gave a must-buy. I gave it a 9 out of 10. I really, um, I wasn't a huge fan. I really enjoyed the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, love the characters, didn't love the story. This one, I enjoyed everything about the movie and I liked it more than the first. Some people thought it was not as good as the first. For me, I liked it more than the first movie um, because we jumped right in it and I got more of everything I liked was with the characters. And I felt like the story serviced them enough or more so I think than the first movie did because everything was setting up that the the cosmic realm uh, so it was a lot of world building and I just did not like the way Ronan was used because I always thought Ronan in the comic books was a cool villain and I just don't think he ever reached that potential in in the movie and he was disserviced which I think hurt the overall movie in a way um so um, I gave it again a nine out of ten. I really, really thoroughly enjoyed uh, the sequel. 
Next, we had Wonder Woman, and it's directed by Patty Jenkins. It was written by Ellen Heinberg, Jeff Johns, and Zack Snyder. And the breakdown is as follows. Uh, Before she was Wonder Woman, she was Diana, Princess of the Amazons, trained warrior. When a pilot crashes and tells, tells of a conflict in the outside world, she leaves home to fight a war, to end all wars, discovering her full powers and true destiny. And I gave this a, a rating of a date night rental, which is 7.5 out of 10. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed Wonder Woman, but it didn't blow my mind. You know, it was a serviceable movie. It was a good movie. Uh, I think it comes out digitally at the end of this month. I think in a couple of weeks. And... Um, I definitely will add it to my collection. I just, you know, I think when I look at it in comparison, you know, you try not to compare them. I just, you know, on its own merits, it didn't blow me away, but I thought it was a really solid movie. And I knew that it was what the DC expanded universe needed as far as their film universe. They needed a solid movie that was a critical in, in financial success and that's what it delivered it delivered what i anticipated it met my expectations but didn't exceed them so that's where it got for me it was a seven and a half i couldn't give it more uh more than that but it was no I'm not saying that it was a bad movie again it met my expectations but did not exceed them in any way um so that's where you know um I graded it or it was on a curve with me, but I, it was a, it's a movie that I will own and watch over and over again. I just love the performances in the movie, but again, I'll leave links to the previous episodes when I did the full on reviews for wonder woman. And also if you are not familiar, I have a, a YouTube channel up now for, um, for comic book savant, youtube.com, uh, comic book savant, the one of the first reviews um, I did, I did non-spoiler versions, shorter version reviews for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, um, for Wonder Woman, and for Spider Man as well. So you can actually see short video reviews on YouTube if you want a shorter non-spoiler review, or you have the audio content that will have you know uh, the actual full-on review you know here on the. Uh, the feed so you can check either one out um next is spider-man homecoming which is directed by john watts and it was written by jonathan goldstein john watts john francis daly christopher uh ford chris mckenna and eric summers all were credited writers on this film so it was a lot of different chefs in the pot on this one um And the breakdown is as follows. Several months after the events of Captain America Civil War, Peter Parker, with his help of his mentor, Tony Stark, tries to balance his life as an ordinary high school student in Queens, uh, Queens, New York City, while fighting crime as a has his superhero alter ego, Spider-Man. As a new threat, the vulture emerges. Um this one I gave a rating of a must buy. I gave it a nine out of 10. I really enjoyed this movie. Um, it exceeded my expectations because I came in not knowing what we were going to get. And I kind of, I have to admit though, Spider-Man is one of my um, all time favorite heroes and probably my favorite Marvel hero of all times. Um, I kind of have fatigue because they've done so many movies, you know, in the past 17 years, this is, you know, the sixth Spider-Man movie we've had since 2000. That's a lot. Um, so, you know, I, I came in with tempered expectations and I really loved the touch John, John Watts put on the movie and the performances of Tom Holland and the supporting cast just really nailed it home and, um, gave it just a, a, uh, just a lovability to the, to the movie. Again, all of these movies on this list are movies I will own and would rewatch. I think, you know, I think this is a pleasant movie to go through and Michael Keaton as the vulture, you know, and, you know, gives me hope on what Marvel could do going forward with their villains where you don't have to, they don't have to monopolize the bulk of the screen time, but they can be just as effective and fleshed out just as much as the hero without having the hog screen time. So they show they can do it 
in the format of the movies they like, giving the, the, the villain a little bit more body and making them more three-dimensional and giving them proper motivation so you can understand their perspective on, you might not agree with it, but at least you understand where they're coming from. Um, I really enjoyed that about the movie and, and makes me definitely want to go back. Uh, so that's kind of the shakedown. So, you know, in ranking them based upon just my scores alone, um, I, you know, that puts um, going from worst to first. And it's really no worse on this list, to be honest with you. Um, we would have Wonder Woman at four, Logan at three, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, at two, and then for me, my number one movie so far the year has been Spider Man Homecoming. Um, not saying, and I love all four of the movies, but I, if that would probably be the order, if I would rewatch them and the priority I would rewatch them in, is just for the overall experience. But I think they're all good and they're and they're all great or awesome in their own way. But just how I I think based on my enjoyment levels of the movies, how I would watch them given like if I had to pick the order, if I was with a group of people on what movie you should watch, I would probably watch them in this set order from worst to first. Um, Cause I feel like the increasingly, they um, incrementally get better as you go up in the overall quality and enjoyment level. And also just want to look at what we got coming on, the the horizon you know we have still have you know thor ragnarok is coming around the corner that is november 3rd then um we have two weeks later we have justice league i'm starting to get skeptical about if justice league is going to hit that release date you know um we it's more and more reports coming out about the massive reshoots and basically now it went from um, Josh Whedon coming on, just doing some basic reshoots to the, you know, he's restructuring and redirecting a lot of the movie. And these reshoots went from a month to multiple months, um, going on. So I'm starting to get a little worried if it's still going to hit that target date or not. Would I be upset if it would move a little bit because I'm kind of stoked for it to see what they're going to do next coming off of Wonder Woman. Um, but if it all went into potentially making it a better movie, um, I think I could live with it. And then last but not least, we have Star Wars The Last Jedi, which, you know, I don't know. Um, at this point, I- I'm ready to see it. But the, the the fever hasn't gotten me yet when it comes to it because we've seen so very little. And again, I think before, it would, like when Force Awakens, before Force Awakens hit, it was such a hiatus and we were all the Star Wars fans clamoring for the next drip drop of what we were going to get. And we knew when Disney bought Lucasfilms that we were going to get more Star Wars movies. But since that initiative kicked off with The Force Awakens, we've gotten um, Rogue One, which was a great movie. Um, and we have so many other comic movies to kind of, you know, keep us, keep us, uh, in place. You know, in another movie I totally forgot about off this list of upcoming movies is, um, the Kingsman, the golden circle that comes out next month in September. I left that off the list. So we have four movies upcoming and that looks, that looks awesome. So, um, you know, so. Uh, you know, so many of the comic movies in between that time to keep our attention that we're not so like rabbit like we were for Force Awakens when it was coming out. You know, they've been releasing some photos. They did the Vanity Fair spread. They did uh, the, uh, the Entertainment Weekly spread. So we're starting to get more information trickling out. We'll probably get, a, you know, um, another trailer dropping some point soon. So it's going to be more stuff to come with it, but I'm just kind of ready. December is not that far away in, you know, and again, we have three other movies to talk about and that'll have our attention between now and then potentially, but I, you know, don't quote me on it, but I kind of feel that justice league might shift. If it might shift, it might just shift a few weeks, but I still think it will be out before the year's end. Um, but maybe it comes out, Maybe it's delayed by two weeks and comes out the very end of November just to give him time. Because I'm one of the last stories that I read about 
the past day or so, or over the past weekend or so, is that the one of the main thing with the reshoots is going on, going on is changing the tone of Cyborg and even changing his look because, and I've said this from the beginning, if you've listened to the show, that it was just something about Cyborg's look, the CGI of it, that just didn't work for me and didn't look like the character. And they, like the actor looked so much like a, what I would imagine a Vic Stone to look like, but just the Cyborg thing, it just, the CGI when it just looked wonky to me and it just, it was one of the most off-putting things to me um about the movie so they're they're working on that and changing his look and changing the tone of the the movie and the character in the movie so maybe it gets delayed by a week or two maybe a month you know and it might come out closer to star wars not so close to uh thor ragnarok it remains to be seen well i guess you know time will tell but I feel kind of iffy on if it's still going to hit that date or not. But again, ultimately, we will see uh, soon enough, I guess, you know, because they're they're working full full blast on it at this point to get the reshoots completed. Maybe they're going in, working on some touching up the CGI on um, on Cyborg. And I was kind of surprised from the teaser they did at Comic-Con last year to when we saw the trailer this year that you could see he had been changed a little bit, but it wasn't more revamps. Cause I, I would have thought the most feedback they would have gotten from people was that that was the most off putting thing about the trailer. I mean, I don't care for the flash suit, but it's grown on me and the effects they've done with flash. Like I, I'm cool with the suit. It, it still looks kind of, um, transformery to me but it they've made that work but they didn't do that same thing with with um with um the cyborg character with the cgi so like hopefully they nail that and make them look a little bit more truer to the the vibe of the character from the comics and the look of the, the character because i think the, the actor in the little i've seen has that charisma to him um so like help him help that care elevate that character um where you when you can um because i think this could be a very important movie to that character and like we said in the upcoming slate in comic-con that dc talked about their upcoming slate of movies that they're looking to do cyborg cyborg was conspicuously conspicuous in his absence there we go trying to think of the phrase to say in when they announced that slate, when the initial slate years ago that they announced, you know, we're supposed to be getting a cyborg movie coming up in 2019 and now it's no word of it. So, um, I don't know what that means, you know, and it was also, you know, rumored that, um, you know, he might show up in the flash movie before his movie would take off, but we know all the problems that they've had with the flash movie. And now we have the announcement out there that flash, the flash movie is going to be flashpoint. So I'm assuming, you know, flashpoint is going to kind of serve as a kind of how, um, Captain America civil war. It'll be, you know, uh, uh, you know, base for flash, but you know, just like Captain America civil war was, you know, at the base of cat movie, but still at the same time, it was like Avengers 2.5. And I'm thinking that, that's the potential where, um, you know, Flashpoint is going to be Justice League 1.5, and they might use that as a jumping off point to kind of get some of these other characters started, like like a cyborg, and maybe depending on the success of the Justice League and potentially the Flash movie, that maybe that will jump start and we will start to hear something. But my, you know, I said this in my fixing of the DC EU episode. Um, that I feel like that movie is just going to be canceled at this point. But if they hit nail the tone with this character, right. And I'm assuming Josh Whedon is seeing some potential in the character and the fact that he's trying to change the tone of the character and the look of the character to elevate Ray's, you know, performance. So he must be something there that he likes and sees potential in that they're, you know, he's changing, you know, changing things around to, you know, spotlight him more. So that's a good sign. So ultimately it remains to be seen, you know, how that, how to shape out. But I have my, I have faith in Josh Whedon cause he's great with character development and character moments. So that'll be interesting to see 
how that will will pan out when the time comes. But that's all I have for you guys for this this week in this episode. It's a kind of a shorter episode. Um but I just wanted to get that out there. So you, if you haven't seen any of the movies, I'll have links in the post on the website um, with links to um, where you can get all the movies. Um, they're Amazon affiliate links. So if you click on them, you help support the show. So if you can do that, I greatly appreciate it. If you don't already own them or you can pre-order the ones that should be coming out soon. But Guardians of the Galaxy just dropped digitally. Logan's been out. Wonder Woman's coming out. You can pre-order that. You probably can go ahead and pre-order Spider-Man Homecoming. I don't know when that's dropping on home video yet. I don't think a release date has been revealed yet. But you can always pre-order stuff on Amazon early. So do that. Help support the show if you would. I would really appreciate it. Um, That's all I have for you guys this week. Again, you can always reach me on Twitter, Instagram, um, at Comic Book Savant. I'm also on Facebook, facebook facebook.com, Comic Book Savant, on YouTube as well. Like I said, the channel's been doing well. We're, uh, what, 12 episodes on Comic Book Savant video. Um, That's doing well. I'm getting comfortable, and I'm doing more content there. And I look to be even increasing more output and um on that also if you um like to help support the show i have a patreon which is um patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash comic book savant if you can give a dollar a month help support the show help to grow the show still a lot more things that i want to do with the show um you know again so if you can spare that i would greatly appreciate it, it only goes to better the show um also, um, if you if you don't have that to spare, because I know money's tight for everyone, definitely share, subscribe to to the um, YouTube channel, um, leave reviews. There's other ways that you can help support the show. You guys don't know how much it means. Even if you just email me and let me know your thoughts on the show or or suggestions on things you want me to cover. That's the kind of things that I want from you guys that will help make the show better. I want this to be an interactive experience. And, you know, I've said it over and over again, and I truly mean it. Um, I've been getting some more communication from you guys. I've been getting more follows and likes, like I said, on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, you know, more likes on the Facebook page. I even um, started up a discussion group as well and visit the website. The website is a hub for everything related to the show. So, I mean, you can get to all the links that I'm discussing right now from the website. I also have links to friends of the show, other podcasters. I have a links page that have friends of the show to, to help you discover more things. So it's not just about me as well. It's just about the medium of comic books and spreading the comic book love. There's a lot of other great creators out here that does content related that you guys can consume. So use the resources that I lay up for you guys. I put a lot of work into it to give you guys as much avenue to, to discuss things, not just with me, but with one another. That's why I set up the discussion group is, is, is you know, it's free to join. Um, you know, it's um, a Facebook page and a discussion group on Facebook um, as well. So again, use those resources. They're there for you. And I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll be back again next week with another episode of Comic Book Savant. You guys take care and have a good week. See you then. And into lyrical wholeness. And I know this. And I know this. This I know. This I know.